let's get down to business. The first thing I want you to understand is that when we make a circuit diagram, it's, it's, it's made for a certain reason. What's the purpose of a circuit diagram, a schematic diagram? Go ahead, Jasmine. Um, to show um, what they're going to make or what's going to happen. Okay, to show it. Who, who would design a circuit diagram? Um, like, um, like a civil engineer. A low, no, like an electrical engineer. Very good. Electrical engineer. So it's the language that you would use to draw, um, to communicate with the other engineers as to how something's going to work. Let's troubleshoot straight away. We have right here, first of all, a sketch of uh, three objects. Is this a, considered a schematic diagram? No. No. This is the old way to write things with symbols. Is this a circuit that will work? Is this light bulb going to light up? No. No, it's not. Can you, someone tell me why? Go ahead, tell me why. Because the wire is not, is not connecting back to the, to the battery. Okay, the wire is not coming back to the battery. Can someone come up here, steal one of these symbols from me, and put it on the, uh, put it on the illustration to represent what's going on? Go ahead. Put it right on top of, or underneath whatever the drawing is. Good? That looks good? That looks good? That looks good. The symbols we have here represent different materials. So not all wires look the same, not all light bulbs look the same, but the symbols look the same. So why don't we uh, break out into our groups, we'll all get a container and find within there your D battery and your paper clip and see if you can complete a circuit and we'll see what the result is, okay? Here you go. So the material we need is what for this little mini experiment? What materials do we need? Battery and paper clips. So you have a whole bunch of gizmos in your box. Keep it simple. Keep it elegant. Let's try with three wires and then let's open it up. Not the light bulb. All I want you to do is heat up the paper. Does it get hot? Oh, it does. It gets hotter. It does? Yeah. It is hot. Okay. Let's have a vote on it. Did everyone agree that the paper clip gets hot? I saw one group. Uh, make a design that was simple. The reason I wanted the design to be simple is because with less parts, there's less things that can go wrong. It's less expensive. It's simpler and easier to assemble. How did you assemble your paper clip and battery? I assembled it by like, um, I made the paper clip connect to the battery like without the battery holder. holder. And it just started to get hot like with the, without the battery holder and wires. Simple very inexpensive and achieves our goal. But what you found out was that the, the paper clip gets very, very hot, all right? So what do they put on wires to make sure that the heat doesn't escape to uh, raise the temperature of surrounding combustible materials? Evan, what do they put on wires? Rubber. Yeah, they put rubber or plastic. Rubber or plastic, is that a conductor or a non-conducting material? It's a non-conductor, so it's not going to conduct the heat. It's not going to conduct the flow of electrons. You remember these symbols? Yes. Okay, what do we call these? Schematic diagram. Who can tell me what this diagram is saying right here? That one is showing like a battery right. or, or a conductor. And then those are the wires on both sides. And then the squiggly line is um, another conductor. The squiggly line is actually called a resistor. When you see this, it means the electrons are going to flow slowly, but it's used to achieve a purpose. So the resistor might be a light bulb, in this case it is, but it could be a wash machine or a refrigerator or a fan. We're going to take a look at our new symbol here, the switch, all right? So for your schematic diagram now, the switch looks like that. We have, we have a, uh, a break in the current. Can anyone hypothesize what would happen if the switch is what we call open? as demonstrated here, as demonstrated here. What's going to happen to the flow of electrons? That the electricity is not going to flow through it. That's right. We're not going to have a current. We're not going to complete a circuit. Now, if I close the switch, we have a continuous current and we're able to have a flow of electrons uninterrupted, so it's going to illuminate a light bulb or run an appliance. So at this point, let's go to page one in your packet. What I'd like you to do is draw the symbol on the schematic to the left-hand column, okay?
Are there any symbols on there you're unfamiliar with? Okay, What's, what do you think is happening on this schematic diagram? What it, would this be? Um, the switch is open. Had I closed the switch, what do you think would, would happen? What's this apparatus look like to you? Um, the bulb is going to go on and then the buzzer is going gonna, is gonna to shine. Why would you want the light to flash at the same time the buzz is going? Maybe because if you don't, if like, do you, if you like, the buzzer doesn't sound that, that loud to you, you can see the light. Just like um, Emily needs a reminder, she, um, her pee, he, he said the same thing to her, like if he doesn't hear the alarm because he's using a tool that's really loud, he could um, see the light. That's what well said. Let's turn to page two in our packet now. What I'd like you to do is to troubleshoot this illustration you see of the bulbs and batteries. I want you to draw the schematic diagram for that in sequence and then tell me what's happening in the picture. If you draw and look something like this, then you're on the right track. All right. We have a battery represented here, our other battery represented here. We have three light bulbs in a row, one, two, three. This sort of a configuration is called a series circuit. I think it's time to experiment. Is it time to experiment? Okay. There are two light bulbs in your kit. You have a buzzer. You have four alligator clips. So you're welcome to make any type of circuit you want. So if you make any type of uh, contraption here, you have to draw a schematic diagram. It has to be correct for you to submit it. Okay? You could connect the wire, and then we could put the light here, right? And then we could keep going. I got my fan. You're going to do your okay. design so, first. That's a great idea. So um, design it, then build it. Okay. Right? No, we know how to do it. We know the light bulb. We know how to do that. They need red. Should the, oh. should the switch be here or like right the there? The switch should be like right here because it's connected to the light. Where? So oh, but here? Okay, so you guys are done. You got your schematic. Uh, once you submit your schematic, you guys are complete. You can break your stuff down and put it in the box, okay? What's this design say to you? What's happening on there? What do you see? That's the battery. And what else do you see on there? That is what's that? What's that a symbol of? Buzzer. The buzzer. Is this a series or a parallel circuit? You see parallel, parallel lines? Very good. If you persevere, you should be able to come up with a solution to the problem and help Emily. And then we'll write a letter to Australia and let her know we have a design being shipped to her so that she won't get in trouble with her mom. She can ride flash whenever she wants and have a good summer vacation. We good? Yeah. All right. Let's hear it for today. I think one of my favorite things about this unit is that it was uh, a unit based on guided discovery. You talk to the kids about electrical circuitry, um, but then you give them the opportunity to tinker around and play with the equipment, uh, have the discovery of illuminating a light bulb or, or making a buzzer work, and they see how those things happen. So it happens. So you kind of take the mystery away from how electricity runs through a circuit, and uh, the kids did that on their own.